Hey guys, and welcome to this Elite Guitarist Inner Circle video. In this lesson, we're doing Clocks by Coldplay. This was when Coldplay were at the best, in my opinion. It's such a distinctive piano melody, and we're learning to play it on guitar. It's rarely played on guitar, because people just don't think about playing these piano pieces that much. But, you know, it's such a great piece. It's so distinctive. It's a great finger-picking bit. So, you'll be ahead of the crowd when you learn this one. It is a bit of a challenge. But with a lot of practice and patience, you'll definitely be able to do it, and you'll love it as well. To begin with, we're going to tune our low E string all the way down to D. So you can use a tuner, uh, and just make sure that the low E is down to D. Everything else is normal. I'm going to put a cap on at the first fret. So your low E string should sound like this now. And it should match the pitch of your D string. Here. Yeah two strings and a ring together and the sound in tune. So that's a good way of checking the tuning of that. Okay, and then our first chord shape is going to be a type of D chord and it's going to be our index finger barring across at the 11th fret of the B and high E strings. And our middle finger is going to come over and fret the G string at the 12th fret. So you should have that 12th fret G string, 11th fret B, and 11th fret high E. Okay, you're going to have to flatten your index finger, and then bring this middle finger all the way around. So it's going to be right on the tip, so that's going to be quite flat, that index. Middle finger is going to be on the tip. So you're going to have to spend a little bit of time getting in the optimal position to play that. That's why I always recommend that classical position, putting the guitar right in the middle of your legs. Gives you higher access to the higher frets and um, makes things a lot easier. But just for ease, I'm going to show you the way I play it on video. Which is this, because it's just basically a lot easier for me to show you playing the conventional way. But definitely use the classical way if you can. It's a much, much better way of playing. Okay, and what we're going to do then is with our thumb, pluck the low... D string as it is now, and at the same time with our ring finger, pluck the high E string. Then you're going to pluck the B string with the middle finger, the G string with the index finger. So, so far you've got three little plucks. So, pinch on the low E and low D, sorry, and high E. The middle index. And then you're going to pluck the high E string again, middle string again, G string again. So that's six plucks. So as long as you've got this shape with this fretting hand, this bit's not too hard with this hand. And the last two plucks are just high E string and B string. So it's eight plucks all in all. It's like a three, three, two. And that's the rhythm of that, the song all the way through. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So hear that? And that's that bar done. Then you're going to change now to a D minor shape chord. And we're going to move that so your index finger's all the way up at the ninth fret. Okay, so D minor is like this as a shape. But okay, if you don't know that, index finger's going to go at the ninth fret high E string, middle finger 10th fret, G string, ring finger 11th fret, B string. And then what you're going to do is pluck the A string now with the thumb, and these fingers are going to do exactly the same thing as it did in the previous bar. So the only thing that's changed now is your thumb has shifted from the low D to the A. As you've probably found if you learn a few pick finger picking songs, this is really common where the, the pattern itself stays the same with the picking hand just the root note changes occasionally with the foot just to suit whichever chord you play okay so we'll go through with the A uh, D minor chord which is really played up here it becomes a type of A minor chord but you don't have to worry too much about the chord names for this one so it's A and high E together B G high E, B, G, 
high E, B. Make sure you're using the correct fingers with this picking hand. Okay, and it's two bars on this chord. Okay, so so far you've got from the D major to the A minor using the D minor shape. Okay, let's have a little talk about how you can change that from chord to chord a little bit easier there. Don't forget one bar on the D, two on the A minor. Okay, so changing chords for this one is probably the hardest part of the song. Easiest way to change chords then between this D and A minor is to leave your middle finger touching the G string throughout. So watch this middle finger as I change chord now. It doesn't leave the string. So you can keep it connected. You don't have to lift it all off and start all again. The other two fingers have got to do a little bit more work though. Your index finger, if you watch that one this time, all you're going to do is go from your little mini bar position on the D chord at the 11th fret. You're going to lift it and just place it on now at the 9th fret of the high E. Okay, but keep that middle finger connected. While you're doing that, watch the ring finger this time. What that's going to do is just plonk on at that 11th fret B string. And that's going to happen as you're moving. You're going to start putting that down as you're moving. So all three fingers have got a job to do that. And it's a tough little change because you're picking it, so you need to be quite accurate with this chord change. You will want to practice this song slowly as well. Let's go through that again. Middle finger stays connected, index finger comes off, and then on, and then ring finger comes on as well. And all three fingers are doing their job to get in position as you're changing two frets further down. So use the middle finger as a guide from 12 to 10, 12 to 10 on that G string. Okay, and you can practice it real slow like this. Okay, and again. Notice to keep the flow of the music going, those things have got to snap down in that fast motion. That's why I wanted to go through that in detail, with that change. Okay, so you got one bar on the D, at the 11th and 12th frets, two bars on the A minor, and then once you've done that, you're going to go to this chord, which is a A minor shape bar chord. But played up here, it becomes a type of E minor chord. Okay, and if you're not sure of this chord, what you're doing is basically playing 8th fret on the A string with the index finger. No, sorry, 10th frets with the ring finger on at the D string. 10th fret with the pinky on at the G string. And then 9th fret with the middle finger on the B string. And then what you're doing, you've got your root note on the A string. And you've got one bar and it's exactly the same plucking pattern as the previous bar. Okay, no, you don't actually need this ring finger on because you're not plucking this D string here. But I like to put it on, it's just because it's easiest for me. It's easier for me to put it down than it is keep it in the air, especially when you're playing the bar across the eighth fret with this index finger. Okay, it's going to be tough. This is a tough little chord, especially if you're not used to playing bar chords, but because you're picking it in this song, it's a great one to practice it with because by picking out each note you're testing yourself and you're asking yourself is this chord clear, are these notes clear, do I need to work on anything in particular whereas if you're just strumming it you can get away with the old buzz note but that doesn't do much good for your technique right so the pick button again, A string, high E string B, G, high E, B, G, high E, B 
The chord change from the previous bar is quite a tricky one from the A minor using the D minor shape into the E minor. Right, I'll talk you well through the way I do it, which is just basically play this third bar here and then I'll just jump. And then we'll do it once more, nice and slow. Now that there is the intro and the chorus, but for the verse, in the original, the piano part drops out in the verse. But I like to play the same thing using the same chords, but an octave lower. So now we come all the way back down to the familiar, more natural part of the neck for a lot of people, the bit we already know, not in this wild territory up here. But basically this is what I tend to play in the verse. The lower part down here actually works really well for people who are struggling to play the higher part. What you can do is use this lower part as your intro and chorus and then just for the verse not play, kind of like how he does on the recording. But if you're able to play the higher part, use that as your intro and your chorus and then this lower part here as the verse. Now to play this lower part we've got this. So again it's a D type chord. D major, but we're not bothered about this high E string because we're not using it now. What we're doing is plucking the low D and the B string together, then the G with the index, then the D with the foot, and then repeat minus the bass string, so that's B, G, D, and then the last two plucks are B, G. So the eight plucks here are. Low D and B together, G, D, B, G, D, B, G. So you can see how this bit is a lower version of this bit. Okay, the next chord, which was the higher version, was up here. And now we're playing the lower version. That higher version, if you remember, was A minor. Now we're going to play just an ordinary A minor. And the pattern is exactly the same as it was for this bar. Except, you guessed it, our bass note changes to the A string. We'll play that for two bars. So that bit is a lower version of this. Okay, the final bar then based around the E minor is going to be played a little bit differently because we're in drop D tuning and what you're going to do is go from your A minor and what you're going to do is leave that middle finger where it is on that second fret D string your index finger is going to come up to the second fret low D string and then your picking pattern is going to be the same again except your thumb now goes back to the low D string so let me take you through those four bars again in the lower version. So you've got D, so bass note on the low D string, picking starts from the B string, B, G, D. Then we go to A minor, thumb changes to the A string, two bars. Hold this middle finger where it is, bring the index finger across, the second fret low D, from goes back to low D. And standard pattern there. So all the way through.
final part of the song then is going to be the bridge and it's F, F, C, G. Now F you could play whichever F you like. I like this version. Doing the big four fat bar isn't going to work across the six strings because this note now is out. This low D string. It's no longer what is needed. So this is a good version of the F, the four finger version. Check out the chord chart below. C, standard. And then G, we have to play it as a baby G because we can't play the big full G because this low D string is once again out. So F, C, and then G. If you do this baby version of G where it's just third fret high E string, just strum from the D string. It's not the greatest sounding G in the world, but because you're only strumming it for one bar, it's going to work just fine. Your strum pattern then is going to be all downs, but it's important that you keep the groove of the song going. That one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Every time you say one, do a louder, more accented strum. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Just as simple as that. You can do it really slow if you need to. Sounds a little bit different, slower, but you know, a little bit quicker. You got that vibe. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Now you do that for two bars on the F, so that should sound like this. Okay, then one bar on the C. And then one bar on the G, baby G. So all the way through, nice and slow, we got this. That there happens three times in the song, so that F, F, C, G, F, F, C, G, F, F, C, G. Three times. Now on the fourth time, all we do is four bars of F. So, four of these. So, one, two, three, one. Fourth bar, just ring it out and get ready to come back and do it. Or wherever you're playing the melody, if it's down here. So, basically, that fourth section in the bridge, first three sections, don't forget, were F, F, C, G, F, F, C, G, F, F, C, G. Fourth time, four bars of F, three bars of strumming. Fourth bar. Come back into the melody there. And that's all the parts. You know, you got your higher part up here. And you got the alternative lower part. Use that lower part, that alternative part as a verse, or you could just learn the alternative part and then come back later on to the higher part. Then you got your bridge. Which is just the F, C and G strummed. And that was Clucks by Coldplay. Great song, great, great finger picking piece to play. So much fun, so distinctive. And it's a really good workout for both hands and your coordination. And you know, it's not a huge amount of parts to learn. So all in all, it's a great choice for you to learn. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. See you soon.